<laughs> this is a yin yang flow. So it's a combination of some deep kind of slow sink into it yin poses, which we're gonna do up front. And then a, a flowing kind of standing balance sequence um, at the end, right? So about halfway through. So for the yin portion, I like to have at least a couple of soft objects. <laughs> so I've got a blanket, I've got some yoga blocks, there's a pillow across from me, I might grab that too. Um, so, that, so that there's, I can pad up my knee or I can put something under my hip or whatever is necessary because uh, poses are not necessarily exactly the same for everyone. And so to modify or customize them, you might want a couple of soft uh, objects like pillows or blankets. Okay. So for the first pose that we're going to do tonight, it's we're going to start with a little bit of a back bend, kind of a fish pose. And I'm going to do that by taking a blanket and rolling it up in kind of a long, narrow shape like that. And I have, it's kind of an oval, so it's a little flatter. If you roll it a little tighter, like you would try to roll a sleeping bag to get it back in the bag, that's going to be a little bit... Um, a little bit more like lifting. It'll get pushed back at you a little bit more. If you roll it more oval, it'll be a little bit more forgiving, a little squishier. So it really is just preference. So I'm gonna lay that down the length and I'm gonna put my spine down the length of this blanket. And so this does a couple of things. So one is it sort of creates, cause I'm gonna stop the blanket right about at the bottom of my rib cage. It creates a little baby back bend for me. The bigger the blanket, the bigger the back bend. So if you want a bigger shape there, go for a bigger blanket. I'm gonna stretch my legs out straight and see what that feels like. And for me, that always creates a little more of that back bend sensation. Whereas if I put my feet on the floor, it's more mild. If I put my feet together and drop my knees out like little butterfly wings, there's a whole different uh, sensation <laughs> possibility there with the inner thighs. So choose what you like. It's just a matter of preference. And then because the blanket is longer than my actual torso, I could add a little extra under my head by bending and kind of folding the blanket. You could also put an extra pillow there uh, if you want your head to be a little higher up. Now, the other thing that this is doing is because my shoulders are kind of hanging off the edge, is it's, it gives me an opportunity to sort of open this area in the front of my shoulder, which often is kind of pulled forward when I work like on the computer or on my sewing machine or driving, like all kinds of things kind of pull my shoulder forward life. <laughs> so if I keep my arms close in, that sort of, it's milder in sensation, but it targets deeper into my shoulder and actually targets the muscle that holds the shoulder blade to my rib cage in the front here, the pec minor. If I take my arms out broad, I get a much bigger sensation because it's closer to the surface because it stretches my pec major, the big chest muscle. So again, it's a preference. Like, is your chest tight? Does it feel like, you know, you're, there's a constriction in the big chest muscles? Or is it mostly kind of a shoulder thing you might want to adjust? And then of course, if none of this is working for you, you can just lie down and skip the whole blanket uh, fish pose combo. Now with yin, we're gonna get into a shape, fiddle with it until we feel pretty good, <laughs> feels just, just about right, and then let go, relax as deeply as you can. So we'll take a passive approach. That's the nature of yin. Just to be a little bit more receptive, a little more sort of receding or settling. Which does not in any way diminish the power of yin. The power of yin energy is the power of sort of going with the flow or settling back in, right? It's the power of a tiny stream of water to create the Grand Canyon. It's the power of a little trickle of water to create 
um, Carlsbad Caverns, right? So it's there's it's a power that's slower, maybe a little less um, obvious and the power of the practice of yin poses, that approach to poses, is sometimes not as obvious at first. But maybe trust the process and let yourself settle in for about, like we're gonna stay for about another minute or so here. yoga practice, the breath is really a big key thing to me. It's the opportunity to feel how the breath moves through a pose that we're doing, right? So the body is assuming a shape and right now it's slower and a little bit later it'll be faster, but there's still all these shapes that we're doing with the body and then the animation of that shape is coming from the breath and from our attention. more breath. I'm just going to change a couple things. So the first thing I'm going to do is just change my feet you know, to bring those to the floor and then I'm going to take the blanket out from under me. Now, once I get back on my back, sometimes there's sort of an immediate um, urge to move, which I give into, <laughs> but I generally try to keep the movement at this point kind of uh, relaxed and easygoing. So it still has that sort of yin-like quality to it. And then the other thing is noticing what happens. So there's this kind of impression that the blanket has left behind. I can still almost feel that under my upper back. And so there's an opportunity to kind of use the floor, press my upper back into it, sort of massage the area where that blanket was. So I can feel how that tissue is changing and opening and spacing. Now just that one pose, <laughs> when I first place myself down on the floor. Sometimes it feels like my shoulder blade, the t bottom tip of my shoulder blade is pressing deeper into the floor. And then after doing something like that with the blanket, it feels like my shoulder blades lay a little flatter on the ground. So that's another thing is notice like what is the impact of the poses on your body? And then like it, for a pose that we're going to do with two different sides, that'll give us an opportunity to sort of um, make some adjustments one side to the other. So Speaking of which, we're gonna, we're gonna do a banana shape. So we're gonna stretch ourselves out nice and long. And this is a, just a crescent. It's a side bend in honor of our full moon here tonight. <laughs> we're gonna bend into a moon shape, a little crescent shape. Banana pose, it's sometimes called, it's called crescent. Um, depends on what orientation the body is in as to what, how people call it. Now, I have a little longer stretch going on my left side, and I've got a little curled up shape going in on my right side. If there's any pinching or uncomfortable feelings in my, like right around my last couple of ribs is usually where I'll feel that if I'm being too aggressive. Um, and then on the outside edge, um, I feel that pretty much all the way from like my upper, like my elbow all the way to my knee. But if I wanted to increase the sensation across the outer hip, I can cross my ankle over the other one, right? So I cross the outside curve ankle over the inside curve and then let the hip get heavier. And it tends to pull for me right along the IT band, kind of that outer hip, outer thigh. And so if that feels good, you can do that. You can also adjust the arms into different positions so it feels a little nicer as they settle onto the floor. We're gonna stay with this pose for you know, like around three minutes. We're gonna let ourselves settle into it. So again, if it doesn't feel just right, just make some adjustments. Mm. 
and let your body get heavy. And for me, like the image that I use is either melting, <laughs> which is kind of fun, or um, or like the if you're making a sand castle and you kind of get the sand a little wet and pour it, you kind of settle into a shape, right? A little there's structure to it, but it's pretty liquefied. And that's the idea, it's just kind of liquefying a little bit, letting the body get relaxed and soft. Hmm. Images work really well for me. <laughs> if they don't for you, just work with whatever sensations or whatever kind of uh, makes sense. <laughs> Relax your muscles in one way or another. Now there's sometimes little telltale signs where, like if I've got a little um, gathered muscle between my eyebrows or my teeth are kind of clenching or if I, you know, <laughs> my lips are a little pressed together. Those are little places where if I'm pushing too hard, I'll almost always get some kind of tension in my face. So every now and again, as I do these poses, I just circle and pay attention to my face, make sure that there's not any undue effort going on. It also will crinkle up if I'm, uh, if my body is really uncomfortable, but I haven't quite noticed it yet. Some of us have high tolerances for discomfort, so sometimes we have to clue into the subtle details. Letting go into this shape and being quiet. So we're going to take two more breaths. And then we're just going to make our way back. So one way or another, <laughs> I kind of walk my shoulders back. I bring my legs back and then just notice. And again, there might be an immediate sort of desire to move, which you can definitely take advantage of. There might be a desire to just hold steady for a moment, which there's no wrong answer, there's just choices. And sometimes I like to rinse, I kind of, <laughs> it's called pendiculating, there's actually a word for it, where you sort of shake after you stretch. Dogs do it all the time. <laughs> oh, okay, so if I just settle, it feels like my left side is just a little bit longer than my right side. Um, it almost even feels like my hip is lower. It's, if I put my hands here, it's really not, but it's definitely a difference in the way the muscle feels. So I'm going to do the other side pretty much the same way because this is not unpleasant. If I had some unpleasant sensations in my lower back or in um, my knee or something like that, then make a couple of changes when you do the side. Don't go as far, maybe put a prop under the knee, something like that, so that you have some... Um, kind of like a control <laughs> and an experiment to see if there's like a different approach that you can take to a pose. Now we're different left to right side quite often, so it's not perfect science. <laughs> it's, it's really bad science actually if we look at it from that perspective, but it's still interesting. We'll still get some information. <laughs> oh. you know, there's no peer-reviewed study going on here. We're just, <laughs> we're just trying to, we're out here on our own experimenting. <laughs> I just became aware that I'm sort of leaning a little bit into my left hip. I'm just making a couple of adjustments and then settling in again. So again, we're not trying to hold ourselves still as much as we're just arriving at stillness and sort of letting go, relaxing into.
just sort of circling my awareness through my body, like paying attention um, to little muscles, just trying to notice any patterns I might have of kind of holding on or tensing up when I <laughs> when I'm not noticed, when I'm not a vigilant. <laughs> might be the wrong word. Tension patterns for me anyway, you know, I've dealt with anxiety for most of my life. <laughs> so tension patterns tend to be habitual for me. So what I use my yoga practice for in, in part is to help me become aware of and undo some of that habitual holding of stress and tension in my body. One of the things I like about some yin approach is that I have some time to hang out in the pose and notice how that impacts it. Notice how it impacts my mental state when I'm holding tension in my body. So we're gonna take a nice big breath. And then you can eventually work your way back to the center. And again, we might take a moment. We're gonna to come to a seated position, but in the meantime, you know, I'm gonna take like a minute or so to give everything a little shake, kind of notice where I landed. There's a really nice kind of, It's not exactly symmetry, but there's just a nice sort of feeling now that I've done both sides of um, like softening, right? Just a little softer around my hips, a little softer around my flow back. So I'm, that's what is for me. And I'm not putting any <laughs> words into your mouth or telling you what you're feeling. Just notice it. Notice for yourself. And then you can make decisions based on that as you go forward. Now we're gonna to come to a seated position when you're ready. So if you're not ready yet, you don't come up here yet. But when you are, then we'll kind of take, make a choice. Now, I'm, we're gonna do two kind of hip opening <laughs> poses in a row. And um, everybody's hips are different. The, sh the placement of the acetabulum, which is the little depression in the hip where the femur bone sets in, for some people is more forward, for others more to the side. It can be tilted up or tilted down. So all of our hip, like the socket itself is shaped differently. And then the head of the femur bone can be all different angles and there can be twists to the bone. So it can sit in that acetabulum differently. So there's no right way to do any of these shapes and you can return to your back, um, which just flips you 90 degrees and that all by itself can sometimes create more ease in a shape. So with that disclaimer, <laughs> the first option for the first shape is just to sit cross-legged and kind of draw the legs as close to the middle as possible. So that's gonna target the outer part of the hip again. We're kind of working this outer hip line. Um, so bringing the legs in a little closer. The uh, second option is to stack the shins on top of each other. And you can do that you know, just right on top, or you can even add a block and take the shin to a slightly different angle because we've still got that height, right? And then the third option would be to bring the knees to the midline and stack the knees on top of each other. And for me, in order to achieve that shape, I need to elevate my hips. So it might be helpful to sit up on a pillow um, and then one of these shapes might be more comfortable. So what I do is I get as close to a square as I can and then I just fill in any gaps with a prop. Now, first option, is, once you've got the legs decided, is to either sit up and just pause, add a twist. You can do a seated twist, which is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> or you can fold forward, right? So you can add more pressure to this outer hip line. I'm just exploring how much of my lower back 
middle back and neck, I want to twist into the shape. I might turn my head the other way, see what that feels like for part of the time. So again, we're gonna stay for about three minutes. Again, I'm trying to sort of feel myself settle into the pose, kind of release into it. There's not a lot of, almost like I'm trying to lift myself up off the floor kind of sensation of the muscle clenching in. soften my eyes. So I'm gazing out at the world with a little bit more kindness, a little less vigilance. for one more minute. We're just shy of that anyway. <laughs> Somewhere in that neighborhood. Take two more breaths. And then I'm gonna come out of there. Now, the second shape is also has some options. We're gonna take the leg that's up on top or in the front, however you wanna think about that. And that guy's gonna spin around. So the first option is to stop kind of halfway. And that's, this is the deer pose. And the deer pose for me, if I stop here, um, is is more a kind of inner, like internal rotator, which is a little muscle that lives up here, um, and hip socket phenomenon. Whereas if I were to straighten that leg out behind me and take this more into a swan, you might know the pose as a pigeon. Um, so that then becomes more hip flexor on this side and my external hip rotators on the other side. So you can decide how, you know, where in that spectrum, because there's like some in-between spaces that you can take up. Just in the spectrum of somewhere between a deer and a swan, <laughs> where do you want to land tonight? And again, we'll hang here for about three minutes and you can flip a pose 180 degrees and lay on your back also with this shape. Often just turning the, sh you know, turning your body 90 degrees or 180 degrees um, will uh, make the pose feel completely different. And as I'm holding this, I'm kind of finding some new little places to explore, new angles, so you can make little adjustments. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you, one thing might feel good for the first minute and then you need to change it, right? 
to the you, you have permission to do as you like it's the approach we're taking is a softer receptive approach that's giving us that yin quality Stay for one more minute here, y'all. in with the quality of your breath. We're just going to take a few more. Okay, two more. So get out of the shape as I exhale next time. I'm going to lean towards my right side. This is my right leg up front. And then get that left leg and bring it around. Oh, and for a moment, <laughs> I'm just going to unwind that. So again, sometimes a little pendiculation, a little shimmy, a little shake. Feels really nice. Oh. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. <laughs> there might be somebody here who hasn't heard it. So I paid for this workshop, five day workshop with this um, master teacher named um, Angela Farmer. She's in her mid to late seventies. She's been doing yoga since she was in her early twenties at least, <laughs> maybe earlier than that. Um, so, you know, down the road a ways, done a lot of practice. And I went to one of her workshops and I can't remember how much I paid for it. It was somewhere between five and $700. It was a lot of money for me, especially a lot of money. And um, the first thing we did was lay on our back and shake, shake an arm. We did that for like, I don't know, two or three minutes on one arm and then two or three minutes on another. It was 20 minutes of shaking body parts. That was all. It was just shaking body parts for about 20 minutes. And I thought to myself, what have I paid for? <laughs> I was really skeptical, right? And then at the end of all of it, I let go of that idea and just felt it. And it felt amazing, right? So sometimes the things that are really, like we're really skeptical of are also times opportunities for us to try. Just try it. <laughs> so if you are not sure what kind of movement, try something, see what happens. It might be good. Or you might decide you're not to do that again. All right, so we're coming around and doing those same two poses on the other side. Now, <laughs> this is going to be different because my right hip has had a chance to be in that um, pigeon pose, right? That swan pose. So on this side, it might be a very different uh, experience. And uh, it is. <laughs> so hanging out with my stacked up legs. I'm going to add a twist to this because I did that last time. So I'm going to do it again. Now, you can also decide not to do what you did last time, right? You could totally shake it up <laughs> and do something completely different and see what happens. That's also an experiment that I sometimes like to do. Like, what happens if I do two different poses that are similar but not the same? Usually I feel slightly wonky or asymmetrical for a period of time, but it doesn't last very long. It's always back to normal the next day. So that's a fun experiment also. But if you're so inclined, <laughs> we'll do the one, then we'll do the same thing on both sides. Mm. 
noticing some kind of tightness, a little bit of stiffness around my neck tonight. So I'm just checking in with that, releasing any tension I might be accidentally carrying there. And occasionally I just turn my head the other way. So I've got a little different pattern to work with, with a handful of, a handful of breaths on one side and then turn it the other way and do a handful of breaths. So that's what I'm up to, but you can do as you like. Trying mostly to keep my upper back kind of spinning into the twist the same way, even though my head wants to lead it the other direction. Mm. One of the things I find really fascinating about yoga practice too is sort of noticing the inclinations of my predator body. And what I mean by that is that humans as primates are we're predators, comparatively speaking. You know, our eyes are on the front of our head. We have the right kind of dilation in the pupils and other things that make us more prone to that sort of like, we're not prey animals, generally speaking, although occasionally when up against a mountain lion, things shift. But, <laughs> but generally speaking, we're in the predator category. So there are, there are biological things that happen um, because of that, I tend to lead myself around with my neck, right? I tend to lead myself around with my awesome, groovy, opposable thumb hands because <laughs> that's part of being a primate. So <clears throat> those are interesting to me to kind of notice the biological inclinations that my body has that might be slightly protective. We're going to stay for one more minute, by the way. or just shy of that. <laughs> and turning the head and positioning the head are definitely one of those things that kind of tunes me into some of that. So I'm going to take two more breaths. And with my exhale, I'm coming out of this twist and I'm going to take this leg around. I'm going to kind of turn this direction. I'm going to start with a little deer shape. And then just turn it a little bit and then turn it a little bit until I turn it into a swan shape. <laughs> Eventually it will turn there. You can stay, you know, up higher with your torso. You can fold yourself down toward the ground no matter what your legs are up to. You've got all that options as well. Human beings, we're really unique in the animal kingdom. This bipedal <laughs> circumstance and some of the muscles that are responsible for our being able to do what we do, which humans are largely designed, our primary mechanism of survival is running. So our ability to, <laughs> to run um, and to some degree climb also, although we're not as good as some of our uh, other primate cousins like uh, orangutans and other animals, they're better at climbing, but um, our, our bodies are built for running. All of the big muscles are in our butt, our hip, our legs. Um, and so as we do these kinds of opening spaces, like we're opening this big hip flexor, we're working on these external hip rotators that make it possible to stabilize our hips as we're moving um, one foot and then the other, and you know, in a bipedal walking or running position. We're getting really deep into what it is intrinsically to be a human being the mu from a muscular standpoint, right? From a biologic standpoint. And sometimes for me, that brings up some interesting sensations, some interesting notions. Sometimes these poses make me feel grouchy. <laughs> 
sometimes they make me feel all calm and peaceful. <laughs> it could go either way. <laughs> Just a wee bit longer, a little shy of a, maybe like 30 seconds or so. Let's say three more breaths. <laughs> So again, I'm gonna kind of lean into this front leg hip and bring my back leg around. Oh. And before I get, you know, into the, like we're gonna transition into the yang sequence, but before I get there, I'm just gonna take a moment to sort of feel, jiggle, <laughs> notice. And then when you're ready, come up to, like you can come to an all fours and do some cat shapes. Or if you'd prefer, you can go to child's pose directly. That might be the place to land to start with. I'm gonna start with a child's pose. It sort of has similar qualities to the last pose, so it's a good kind of transition zone. Now, essentially, I'm gonna start with a little series, like kind of a modified plank cobra series. <laughs> so from this child's pose, I'm reaching my arms out and then coming forward and lowering down. And then cobra pose, which I do mostly with my back muscles rather than pushing with my arms. And then just coming back towards that child's pose. And then moving forward and lowering down coming into Cobra and pushing back up and then settling into child pose. <laughs> and one more like that. And then as I come back, I'm just going to stop at the all fours position and do a few rounds of oh, little cat sequences, so a little tuck and tilt of the pelvis, like Halloween cat, swoopy cat, <laughs> or cow, whichever you want to call it. Oh. My brain likes to categorize things more like hmm, farm animals go together, pets go together. <laughs> so <laughs> just keeping these as cats <laughs> works better for me. <laughs> sometimes I placate my brain and sometimes I challenge it. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to take a downward facing dog. So I'm going to go right into there. And then if you're not a big fan of downward dog, just use it to get yourself on your feet. If you love it, then take a moment and maybe sort of work into it a little. Oh, liquefy the dog. Oh. Sometimes I like this kind of cross-country skier dog where I do a wide angle and a kind of squat into either side. Oh, it feels good. So when you're ready, we're going to get to a standing position. You can Take a little longer as needed. Ooh. Now, 
my mat's a circle, so I just decide this is the front. <laughs> like, but if your mat's a rectangle, it might be more obvious. But pick a side that's going to be the front or the top of your mat. And we're going to just, that's going to be that landmark for the rest of the night, right? Or for the rest of this practice, anyway. So that if I say, turn to the front of the mat, we're always turning in the same direction. Towards this landmark. Okay. So then find a mountain pose. And to start with, I take a kind of barometer of just, I've got my feet turned so that toes are pointing forward. They're about hips distance apart. I've got my arms in a neutral position. And more or less, I'm trying to notice like, what's the inclination? Like, does it feel like my ribs wanna stick out? <laughs> does it feel like I wanna hunch forward? I'm exaggerating, but Sometimes I get like an inkling of that. Often my calf muscles are tight enough that they kind of push me toward my toes. So noticing any inclination there. And then is it the same left and right, right? And then just overall, what is the quality of the pose? So that as we come back to it over and over again here, I've got some things to compare it to. All right, so we're gonna take a nice big breath, reach the arms up. Grab your right wrist, a little crescent. Coming back to center, all the weight on the right leg. We're going to lift the left leg, come to tree pose. Any version you like will do. <laughs> and then picking up your left leg, we're going to step back to warrior one. So there's a little bit of a diagonal with the hip. You can turn to the diagonal or turn your ribs forward. Plant the feet nice and firm. We're going to fold in, wrapping the arms behind the back. Now you can leave your arms loose if you prefer. You can lace your fingers together. I'm just grabbing one hand with the other. You're gonna straighten out the front leg, see what happens. Maybe it doesn't go all the way straight tonight. And then bend it back. I'm relaxing my neck, straightening out the front leg. And bend it back. Straightening out the front leg, I'm gonna release my hands lift myself up so my spine is about even and then i'm picking up my back leg my left leg and rotating to the right inhale come back curl into a ball exhale stretch out rotate to the right inhale come back curl up into a ball stretch out rotate to the right <laughs> bring that left foot to the ground come up halfway and fold and all the way up to standing, nice big stretch. Oh. And mountain pose. And check in. Is there any asymmetry now? <laughs> nice big breath, arms reach up. Grabbing the left wrist, we'll stretch over to the right. Coming back, weight in the left leg, right leg comes into the tree pose. One more breath, and then I'm going to pick up that right leg, step back to my warrior one. Ooh. Folding forward, wrapping around, grabbing my other hand, giving myself a little humble warrior, and then straightening out that front leg and bending it, mm. straightening it out, <laughs> bending it. One more time, straightening it out. Bending that leg, I'm gonna release my arms. Left hand to the floor, I'm sorry, right hand to the floor, right leg in the air. Exhaling, twist to the left. Bring it to the middle, curl into a ball. Twist to the left. Bring it to the middle, curl into a ball. Twist to the left. Oh, one more. And then twist open. Coming back to the center. Right foot down, coming up halfway. Fold all the way in, come all the way to standing. Oh. Find a mountain pose <laughs> and pause. Has anything shifted? Now prior to, <laughs> to this round, I felt like my arms and my torso were longer than my legs. Now I feel like I've got a shrimpy little torso and a million yard long legs. Neither of those two things was true. <laughs> it's just interesting to notice the sensations. 
I take in one more breath there. So I'm reaching both arms up. Oh, grabbing that right wrist, little crescent stretch. Coming back to center, we're going to slip into a chair pose. Now it can be a really simple, like I'm on a bar stool kind of chair. It can get deeper. You can bring the arms down. Just finding a chair pose that's going to work for you tonight. <laughs> As you exhale, we're going to twist towards the right. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, twist towards your right. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, twist towards your right. Now you can stay there or snuggle an elbow in around a knee. Sink in a little deeper. Just trying to feel out my knees, keeping them stable. One more breath. Coming back to the center, fold forward. Now we're gonna leave that right hand on the floor. We're gonna pick this left side up. Take a half moon balance. <laughs> Furniture is awfully helpful. <laughs> I take advantage whenever possible. <laughs> so lifting up through this hip. And then I'm gonna step oh, myself into warrior two <laughs> with some drama. <laughs> Coming back to reverse warrior over to a side angle, oh, stretch into that, a reverse warrior, a side angle, oh. and then one more time, <laughs> oh. now I'm going to straighten out my front leg and just take myself into a triangle, I'm going for a bind, you can use a bind, you can have your arm up, <laughs> you can look up or down, you can adjust the hips forward or out, Rotate the torso forward or down, up or down. There's lots of levers <laughs> with the triangle pose. Pick the right levers for you. One more breath. Maybe two if it's good. <laughs> and then we're going to take, we're going to spin away from the front of the mat and kind of come to a wide angle forward bend. So you might wind up, like I always wiggle a little wider. If the toes parallel to each other feels good, awesome. If you feel any tension in your hip or your knee, just turn the toes out. Often that will relieve that pressure. And then decide, should you bend deeper <laughs> or come up a little? What's the right answer for you tonight? Release tension from your neck. We're gonna take two more breaths. turn this back toward the front of the mat, back towards our half moon balance, <laughs> bringing that left knee in, putting the foot on the floor, coming up halfway, and folding, and all the way up to standing. <laughs> nice big stretch. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe a little shimmy, and then find mountain pose. And see if there's a difference. <laughs> For me, there's always a difference. And then we'll do the opposite side. So nice big breath. Reach up, grab that left wrist. Oh, little stretch over. Coming back, we're gonna take that chair pose. And again, it might be a light chair to start with. You might sink in a little deeper. And then your exhale, twist towards your left. Inhale back to the middle, exhale twist, inhale to the middle, exhale twist, <laughs> inhale to the middle, exhale twist and hold steady. So again, I'm just for myself checking in, <laughs> finding an appropriate amount of twist. You might be layering an elbow over your knee, holding on in some other fashion. One more breath. Coming back, we're gonna fold forward. And again, this is gonna turn into a half moon balance. So we'll find our way there. We'll lift from the hip. <laughs> One more breath. And then with or without grace, <laughs> landing into a warrior two. Whee! <laughs> Coming back to reverse warrior when you're there. And over to a side angle. Oh. 
that's a good pose. Coming back and, oh, and over. Oh. <laughs> Coming back one more time. <laughs> and over. And then again, I'm going to turn this into my version of a triangle pose. Oh. Given the <laughs> inclinations of my own joints and the way it feels tonight. <laughs> Two more breaths. And then we're going to fold this around and into ooh, that wide angle forward bend. Oh. <laughs> Starting with a bend of your choice. And then we're going to turn the toes a little bit, come over, maybe do a little half squat on the right side, a little half squat to the left, a little half squat to the right, a little half squat to the left. One more of those. Your hips might be lower than mine <laughs> or higher as the case may be. All right, now that I'm over here toward the front of my mat, I'm going to keep going and work my way back. Whee! Do my half moon balance. I'm going to curl that in, put my right foot on the ground, come up halfway and fold and all the way up to standing. One more time after a bit of a shimmy, <laughs> we'll just check in with mountain pose. Does it feel different than it did at the beginning? And always mine does. I feel more energized. Usually, <laughs> usually there's a little hum. So we're going to get down onto our uh, seat and eventually onto our back. So I'm going to start with downward dog <laughs> and get myself into a semi, <laughs> semi hands on the ground <laughs> to start with. And then I'm going to come back to my child's pose because that was a nice little touchstone earlier. Oh. If you have another idea, do yours. If you like this idea, come here. <laughs> and then I'm going to just myself over. Now, eventually, I'm going to be <laughs> ready to kind of stretch out into a final relaxation shape. But before I get there, I am going to do a little, a little happy baby. <laughs> Make a little room for myself here. <laughs> All right. Oh. So I generally like this more kind of like upside down child's pose <laughs> with the feet closer to the middle rather than out um, all stirrupy. <laughs> that just feels a little nicer. And then a little rock. You could do a little spinal twist or turn this into other shapes as you like. Again, it's just sort of a little touch point and for me it feels very, very, very similar to child's pose. Even crow pose if you <laughs> flipped your crow upside down. <laughs> oh, I'm sure crows frown on that. <laughs> Unless they're doing it themselves. So I'm going to put a blanket underneath my legs. So it creates a little ease for my hip flexors and my low back. And then extend the legs out. <clears throat> And then the final pose may be the most yin of all the poses we're doing tonight, <laughs> corpse pose. If you'd rather, you can put your legs like up on a chair or on the couch. Um, so there's a little more of an inversion quality to it. As long as you can ooh, completely 
relax every muscle. I'm just readjusting my bones as I let go. Things shift around a little. Once I find the just right spot, <laughs> or pretty close. As close as I can get to what Goldilocks likes. And we'll relax and let go. Now I don't hold on too tight to my brain while with this final pose. I mostly just let everything relax and try to just be present. But if my mind starts to think about stuff I've got to do later, or I get the inevitable loop of song lyrics, <laughs> then I'll keep myself kind of coming back to the breath when I catch it. Otherwise, just let go. And try to sort of softly hold yourself in this present moment. Without losing it, just notice your breath again. And if you can, at the top of your inhale, just add a tiny brief pause. Just hold the breath, breath for just a moment. And then let it go nice and soft. And do that for about four rounds. Once you sort of let yourself breathe more normally, you can start wiggling and stretching fingers, toes, wrist, ankles, all the things. Oh, I, of course, take every advantage of being still curled up on the floor to massage my back one more time <laughs> by rocking. <laughs> and then. When you're ready, come to a seated position. Oh. Thank you so much. 
for joining me for some yin yang yoga this evening. Let's take a nice big breath together. A thick inhale. And a big deep sigh. Hmm, namaste, friends. <laughs>